I'm going to talk about this, just a few talking points. This is Kanye in concert. Uh, a few years ago, he would bring what he called Jesus Christ onto the stage with him. And a dude would just dress like white Christ, I guess. It's a white Christ and a black Christ. I don't know. They got all these colors. And my Bible said don't, don't make nothing that looks like him. So I don't, you don't ask me what color he was because... I'm not, I, don't, I don't believe nothing I see because the Bible said don't make an image of him or a likeness of him. So this, that, this is blasphemy right here. But anyway, he brought him out, you know, used to bring this dude out, whoever he was, you know, looking like one of the Ascension Masters, uh, Serapis Bay or whatever, but he would bring him out and he, I mean, he got a mic. Jesus got a microphone. So I don't know if he's busting around. I don't know what he's doing. But he had this in his concerts um, because, you know, Kanye has a blasphemous demon spirit in him. It's just blasphemy. Like, from the ground up, he is just, I mean, any way he can figure out how to blaspheme God, he will. I mean, he's on a mission to blaspheme God. And so, this is why, you know, I just, I, I've always had a problem with him because he got famous off of his song, Lucifer. That's how he got famous. Made a song for Jay-Z called Lucifer. The hook was Lucifer, son of the morning. And I mean, they just, in the studio, Jay-Z rapped the whole song without writing anything down, had scripture in there, and he said he'd never read the Bible before in his life. He's quoting scriptures in the rap. It was just pure demonic, basically a ritual. Is what they perform. And so Kanye was, is here to go against God. That's what he is. He's, a, he's an at modern day antichrist. Y'all got that much, right? So when I was getting ready to do this video, I wanted to just put him on blast and turn the heat up to 100. But the Holy Spirit really arrested my heart and told me this ain't Kanye's fault. Kanye's just being used. It's the church's fault. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, you know them preachers you be talking to? It's their fault. These are the gatekeepers, and they open the gate for fame, for notoriety, for positions, for collars and crosses, to be able to stand up in front of large congregations, to be able to drive this and live in this size house. They open the gate. And so they let this stuff in. And now this generation is, I mean, they're plagued by it. Antichrist. This generation or the generation that Kanye has targeted does not even know the difference between the sacred and the profane because many of them grew up under pastors that did not make the distinction for the sake of prosperity. So you tell these folks, man, why you having sex and having a baby out of wedlock? What you mean? They don't even know what baby out of wedlock is. I was just having fun and I ended up pregnant. What's wrong with that? It happens to everybody. They haven't seen a mother and a father in the home. Now, there's some folks that just, you know, demon possessed and want to do whatever they want to do. But I'm talking about the generation that don't even know that there's something is wrong with that. Talking to a girl the other day, she's like, yeah, I want to get some tattoos on my face. I was like, why would you get tattoos on your face? I mean, well, I got them all over my body, and I just want to get them on my face. I mean, I feel like our culture is, 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 is acceptable to that now, and it won't hinder me or hurt me or anything. Yeah. But, you know, the next question, where's your father? Oh, I, I don't know him. Because there used to be a time when the father would say, no, nah, you ain't doing that. Do you see them on me? That day you, it used to be that, you know, now, I mean, everybody's got them because folks stop preaching. Where's the preacher getting up? Te he can't get up and teach against tattoos when the praise and worship singers got them. He don't want to offend them. I don't care if you got them in here. I'm going to preach against it. And you better know you shouldn't have got them. And better be sorry. Won't you be walking around here bragging about them? Yeah, I mean, it was a mistake. You shouldn't have done it. Okay, own up to it so you can save the next generation from making that mistake. Amen. Isn't that why we come to church? 
But they don't know. These kids, they don't know. Church, stop teaching it. Stop saying it. Young boy can't get a job because his hair is, he got dreads with mud in it. Somebody need to say something. Preacher's afraid. So for the sake of prosperity, they won't, they, they, they won't preach against it. Romans 10 and 14 tells us, Then how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they haven't or have not heard? And how shall they hear without a what? Preacher. A preacher. So if the preacher isn't bold enough, he's going to open the gate and let this stuff in. I would be shocked at some of the churches I would go do the truth on hip hop in. I go do it and man, they would have more stuff on the stage than people in the audience. I was like, man, all this stuff in the past would be shocked. Man, all this stuff was in my, in my church. Well, what have you preached against? If you preach against it, they'll throw it away at home. It won't even make it into the car. Kanye is taking advantage of a moment in time where the church attempts, here they go, to separate foul music from its lyrical content. Mixing in the, the secular and the profane, trying to separate it, trying to, you know, so they can keep their music. So for the old folks, for them to keep their B.B. King record, they have to okay Nipsey for their teenager. Yeah. They ignored the warnings. From the truth behind hip hop. How many of you know that there were warnings from the truth behind hip hop? How many of y'all did the truth behind hip hop warn you? Really? Mm -hmm. All over the world, they were warned by the truth behind hip hop. At the time, I didn't know what God was doing, but it's abundantly clear now. He was drawing a line. He was drawing a line. You know, for years I wondered, Lord, why am I the outcast? Why am I the man on the outside? Why can't I play in any of the reindeer games? Why am I the Rudolph? As, and God was drawing a line, saying, this line right now, the line don't seem like much, but in the future, this line's going to be very important. So for 20 years, I traveled and preached it, but they ignored it, and they continued to listen and support the artists that promote sin in their lyrics. I just give up on people that can't stop listening to music. I give up on you. Like, if you just can't turn it off, but then you wonder why nothing in your life is happening the way you want, I'm done. I'm, do I'm done. Like, I'm done trying to teach you. You're trying to disconnect one thing from the other. Like, listening to poison doesn't poison you. <laughs> like, ingesting the devil's will doesn't change your will. Like your life is screwed because your music is chopped and screwed. <laughs> and you think one thing doesn't have anything to do with the other. You're going to look up 10 years has passed and your life's still going to be screwed. It has every, look at somebody say it has everything. It has everything to, to do with what you listen to. Everything. Truth behind hip hop is not a lie. <laughs> it's not a lie. Romans 6 and 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to a what? Uncleanness. And to what? Iniquity unto iniquity. So you've lended your body to sin and crap. Even so, now yield your member servants to righteousness unto what? Holiness. Why you can't do that? 
Why do you refuse to do that? Why do you want to see God do something for you, but you won't do that for him? Many pastors are afraid to challenge Kanye and others like him openly because they may offend members or hurt the growth of their church. Why are you pastoring a church if you're scared to say what the boss of the church wants you to say? Can you do that in any walk of life? Why do people pastor a church and then decide to not say what the Bible tells them to say? For member, why would you want members in there that don't want to hear what the Bible has to say? Why would you want a church to grow with people that don't want truth? You want an abnormal church? And you know, once you start doing that, then you got to keep doing it or you'll run the people off, especially when you base the income of the church on them. Now you need them to pay the bills because you put the devil where? In the details. I thank God when I get ready to do something that the Lord is telling me to do, I never look at how many followers I got. I never look at, I, I don't have to look at that. It don't matter. Because everybody that's following is following because they know the truth is coming. When I get up to preach in here, man, I ain't thinking about y'all. I mean, I'm thinking about you, but I ain't thinking about you. <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? I, you're not going to stare me down and make me change what I'm going to say. Amen. That's never happened. Matter of fact, if I start getting looks, I get worse. That's not going to happen in here because I'm not up here to do what you want. I'm not up here to do what I want. If I was up here to do what I want, the band would never stop playing. <laughs> I come to church to play in the band. Okay, the secret's out. Just in case you didn't know. My mama told me that one time. She thought she was prophesying. No, I just, that's just what it is. She said, you, I think you just come for the music. I said, yes. I come for the music, I come to play. Cause I love doing that, that's fun. I preach because I'm called to and that's what God wants me to do. But what G. Craig wanna do, boy, I play right now. I don't want the music to stop. But I do know it has to stop. Even, and for me it has to stop. I gotta get down in the word and study it and prepare so they can teach me as well as teach you. I got to put the keyboard down, PJ Dunn. I got to turn it off sometimes. That's what the devil didn't want to do. Isaiah 14, 11. He didn't want the music to stop. That's what Kanye, he don't want the music to stop. So I ain't, no, ain't no members from the, do what this lady's doing to this preacher. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 says, preach the word, be what? Instant, in season and out of season. That means when it's popular and when it's what? Not popular. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine, the sound doctrine. The sound doctrine of the word. Everyone should know that you are sound. In your doctrine. You don't gain a following. You don't gain popularity without people knowing your sound. Because then you might gain a following of people that aren't following Christ. Then when you, then you can't interject sound because you can't inter interject sound doctrine because the devil is where? Mm. Prominent Christian personalities 
And I say prominent Christian because this is what the world does to them. Prominent Christian personalities that are in bed with the world cause those that desire their statue or to be like them to be silent or passive when it comes to speaking out against various celebrities. So if you want to say something against a various celebrity, these guys will stop you. I know for a fact because there were pastors back when I was doing the Truth Behind Hip Hop. They would have me booked. Prominent, I mean big time pastors, big churches, have me booked to come. And one of these guys will pick up the phone and say, you can't bring him because he spoke against this artist or this famous person and that person gives this much money to me to stop people from speaking out against them. Or I get kicked back from their organization or their company or their, 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 their movie company or their music company or whatever. Or I'm starting a music company and they are my counterpoint or counterpart. We have a gospel and a secular division and they're a part of the secular division so I, they, they can't be spoken out again. So you can't be associated with someone that is doing that since you're in my organization or since you're under me. And so I'd get the phone call, brother, you know. <laughs> you know, we want, well, they'd never call me. I, no, preacher don't call me. The old secretary or somebody called and I, uh, brother, we gonna have to cancel the engagement because, you know, some other things. Go, okay, I mean, I don't wanna come, no way. <laughs> but the devil's in the details, so truth can't come. Yeah, yeah, because they're under these guys. These guys, you know, when you get in this position, you can stop stuff from happening. Pastors fear that they will not be exalted if they upset those with large platforms. I had one of these guys tell him, tell a preacher that was bringing me, and he was very close to me. Tell him, told him, said, hey, man, you bring him, you won't preach at my, at, at, at my function anymore. And he had to distance himself from me. Stop being my friend. Because he knew he wouldn't become what he wanted to become if he left these guys' platform. That's why the Catholic Church even started. That's what Constantine, that was his idea for Catholicism. If I make a hierarchy, I can keep folks from teaching truth. Because their desire to move up in the hierarchy will shut them up. That's why God said, call no man father. When you got all these folks talking about daddy, that's my daddy, my daddy. Yeah, that's, that came from Catholicism because they knew if we put a father over them or a daddy over them, they would have the power to stop anything that we deemed harmful to our plight. So pastors fear that they will not be exalted if they upset those with what? large platforms. Luke 18 and 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Why was he justified? For everyone that exalts himself shall be what? So if you're looking to move up, God is going to abase you anyway. You're desiring fame and desiring to the platforms. You've already been abased and you don't know it. You know how I know you've been abased? Because you can't teach truth. You're not God's son if you can't teach truth. His son is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. If you can't teach truth, what are you doing? You've already been abased. You've already been pushed away. God has already turned his back on you because you're seeking fame just like Satan did. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth, humbleth himself shall what? Be exalted. You want to be exalted? Stop trying to be exalted. That's what he just said. You want God to exalt you? then don't want God to exalt you. I just preached. That makes so much sense, don't it? And I can make the wisest thing sound foolish. But <laughs> 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 
this is the big one that's getting everybody nowadays. Many that know the truth remain passive and tolerant because they have the devil in their own details. Well, that devil in the details is something else, ain't it? They do not want to upset their own finances, their worldly platforms, or their what? Popularity. Their internet and social media follower count is more important to them than the truth of God's word. They can't talk about God at all. They can't talk about Jesus. I'm like, you got how many followers? How many folks following you? And you can't say nothing about Jesus? Hey, but I thank the Lord every day for all the followers. What? what? All the followers you got, you can't get on there and say Kanye is out of line and shouldn't be doing this? <laughs> well, no, see, because Kanye is connected to Yeezy Boost. <laughs> and Yeezy Boost came from Adidas. And Adidas is one of my sponsors. So you got the devil where? In the details. Luke 9 and 25, for what? You know, that's why the internet, you know that's why the internet was created, right? The internet was created to shame people for standing up to the truth, standing up for the truth. It was created because they knew that if we put enough people on there to go against you, you'll stop. You'll be afraid to say something because you want more followers. I'm not talking about the older folks. I'm talking about IGN, the younger generation that grew up with the smartphones. They rate themselves by how many folks are following them. So if Jesus is not going to make them trend, if Jesus is going to stop them from trending, stop their endorsements, stop them from fame, then they can't mention it. We'll mention him in secret. I know I'm preaching. This is what Kanye meant. Luke 9 and 25. For what is a man advantaged if he gains the whole world and what? I know y'all like saying lose his soul. We don't even talk about the soul because that happens after death. Let's talk about right now. You gain the whole world and lose what? Yourself. You gained everything and lost yourself. What self? That self that used to love God more than anything. That wanted people helped, changed. Or be a what? Cast away. Kanye timed this resurgence perfectly. He knew that this was the optimal time to launch his church. He knows that most pastors will be silent because they listen to his music and their wives are vain, selfish, and have low esteem like Kim and her sisters. Folks ain't gonna listen. Folks, no, a lot of these wives won't let you talk about Kanye because Kim is their hero. Yeah, the new, the, the new poster child for the millennial pastor's wife is Megan Good. And she can show her body and be as nasty as she want to be. She's a pastor's wife. Yeah, that's what this generation is growing up watching. And everybody's doing it. Kim, Kardashian, show your body. X-rated video for fame. Just make it popular to be a slut and a whore. He knows that a lot of pastors wish they had Kanye's following and Kanye's money, so they will not come against his success for fear that they may hinder their own. (laughs) I need you to, you know, 
I need you to talk about Kanye. I go on and say something so I can, you know, I'm going to forward it to all the folks I know. Won't you say something? Doc, see, that ain't what God has called me to do. Did God put that on you, Doc? You got the oil for that. That's on you. Really? So God didn't call you to make a difference between the sacred and the profane? <laughs> Doc, you know, I mean, I, I, now I mentioned it. But I say there are those. See, you say the name, but I say there are those. Well, the Bible don't say there are those. The Bible said names in the book is forever. It's names called that'll never go away. The apostles warned of the folks that was preaching the, the, the wrong stuff. Stay away from this one. Stay away from this one. <laughs> you know, that guy, you over there, you know, you got that little church, man. You got a little church, you know. That's a little steamboat. See, you can turn that. See, that just turned real easy. I got this big old cruise ship, Doc. I got thousands of members. Now. I just can't get up and say anything. Well, then you don't need thousands of members. Maybe you have a thousands of members because you get up and don't say nothing. Say something and see how many members you really have. Well, you can't do that because you didn't bought the big old building. I told you not to build that Wendy's. <laughs> Got a Wendy's in the lobby. Starbucks. You know the service about then because we smell the barista. We smell the beans grinding. Y'all hear that sound? That's the beans. It's time to dismiss. Make sure y'all, now make sure y'all patronize. Yeah. Everybody walk out with a cup of coffee. Well, we need this coffee because your message put us to sleep. Give me a double shot espresso. <laughs> Bruh, because that was boring. You didn't say nothing. <laughs> Folks want his money. They want his fame, so they're not going to say nothing. If I say something, it's going to hurt my money and my fame. How does God feel about that? How does God feel about you? Not willing to risk it all for him. After his son risked it all. Gave it all up. But you holding back and won't risk it all for the truth? What kind of preacher are you? Even Kanye West knows that the church has lost its fire. And he can do what he wills with no rebuke or correction from prominent ministries and preachers. He know it's going to go unchallenged. We are living in the last time, and this is a blatant antichrist move of the enemy. It's just sad that the preachers are silent and will not even cry out for the safety of their own children. I'm closing with this. But the Bible says, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word, be instant when? In season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not, what? Endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, what? Teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. And then do what? What does an evangelist do? Evangelize? How do you evangelize without truth? Are you doing the work of an evangelist? Isn't the evangelist the one that cries out and spares not and tries to teach the truth of the word no matter what the, it, whether it's in season or out of season? Or does the evangelist do what's popular to please the crowd? But he said, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And that's the part that's getting them. <laughs> I, brother, I can't prove your ministry. I can, I can make full proof of your finances the way you living, 
or the way you're expecting to live. But there's no proof that what you're doing is what God wants done. Because there's too many devils in the details. We are living in this time, y'all, and I, doing this video, I mean, it just, I was trying to figure out how to, you know, do it or how I was going to do it, and I felt like the Lord just wanted me to narrate it and not really appear in it, just speak it. So I, I just, you know, recorded it, and Chantel put the images and different things on it and whatever, but I've just been getting a whole lot of feedback from people that just feel guilty. Preachers feel really guilty right now, a lot of them, because they know that they went for the fame and they got caught up in the hierarchy and caught up in becoming this and that. And I tell y'all all the time, and this is why I preach so hard, and I'm going to close with this, but I tell y'all this is why I preach to the heroes so much to secure your home. Make sure you are the head of your home. Make sure your worship is coming from your home. Make sure your feeling of worth, your feeling of, 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 of good, or your feeling, you know, your esteem and your validation is coming from you being a man and taking complete care of your family. Because if it's not there, you're going to use the ministry, the platform, the church, the job, wherever you are, you'll use it to feel better about yourself, and that's going to cause you to get off. Because God gave the man the family so he could be completed and feel good. God looked around and saw the animals had somebody. So he said, you know, I need to give man something so that he doesn't look somewhere else for his purpose, for his worth. And I tell these preachers that I was like, look, dude. You got to get your wife in order. You got to get your home in order. You got to get your church in order. That's the problem. That's why you stop preaching truth. That's why you start seeking the, the platform and you start seeking the large crowds. You start seeking the internet likes. You start seeking the endorsement deals. You start seeking all of those things because you feel inadequate in your home. But the way you get the devil out of the details, you got to take care of home first. Everyone bow your heads. Our world is just in a bad state right now. Bad state. But I feel like the creation role message of God is the answer. And rather than just preach it, let's just exemplify it. Let's just be it. Let's show people a better way. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, God, for what is spoken here. And I thank you, Lord, for the truth that you've given us, the platform of truth that you've given us, and the ability to call things the way they are and enlighten, to rebu rebuke and reprove and speak truth with sound doctrine. I thank you for that. And, Lord, as we use this platform to help enlighten others, Lord. Let this message touch the heart of those that you have called to be in charge of flocks. The angels of the churches, Lord, that you have called to lead your people. Lord, the, sh the shepherds of the sheep that are in a very vulnerable, volatile state. I pray, Lord, for these shepherds, and I pray for these preachers, Lord, that no matter how far they've gone or how many devils are in the details, Lord, that they would have the courage, that they would have the fortitude, they would have the endurance to begin making a shift in their own life so that they can go after their first love again, the love of really truly helping your people. God, that it will no longer be about titles. It will no longer be about upward mobility. It will no longer be about elections and campaigns. It will no longer be about garments that define them. It won't be about cars and houses and luxuries that define them. It won't be about public opinion that makes them feel better, likes and views on the Internet. But God, it will be about helping your people. Let us fall in love with that once again, Lord, 
so that we can start one family at a time bringing our children back to you. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.